Welcome to my new video in Link Tutorials. Today I will explain another two operators under Element Operators category. The operators for today are, last and last or default. You will learn today, what does each operator mean and how can we use them in a link query. I will show you different examples using the both operators. At the end of this video you will be able to use the both operators once you need that. Let's go! In the first video about element operators I mentioned, that each link query has an output. This output could be empty, or it could be a collection of elements. The collection could contain only one element, or also more than one element. Sometimes we don't need to get all elements, but only one specific element. To get a specific element, we can use element operators. We can also use element operators within the query, to filter the data we have and getting only one element. If you want to learn more about element operators, you can check the following video. I explained it in detail, what does it mean and when can we use element operators. Let's now start with these two operators. As the name suggests, both operators return the last element from a sequence. It means, I have a sequence containing one or more elements, and I want to get the last element from it. Let's see the following query to understand how can we use these operators, and also to understand the difference between both operators. I have this simple query to get the numbers, which are greater than 3. The output of this query is the following collection. It contains 3 numbers. If I want to get only the last number from these 3 numbers, I can use one of both operators. Let's use both operators. I can use them in this way. I only write the operator with empty brackets. The result of both queries is the following number. It's the last number in the sequence, which I had as output from the query. Until this point there is no difference between both operators. So we can use them in the same way and the result is also the same. This is the first way how to use these operators. Assume I have now another condition to get the numbers, which are greater than 11. The result of the query now is empty, because no number is greater than 11. Let's now use last operator on the left side. As mentioned, this operator is to get the last element from a sequence. But the sequence now is empty. In this case an exception of type invalid operation exception will be thrown, because there are no elements in the sequence. Let's now use the second operator on the right side. As you know, the sequence is empty. The result of this query now is zero and no exception will be thrown. But why I didn't get an exception and where is this zero coming from? As you see, the query here is for an integer array, and the output also of type integer. The default value of integer is zero. So this operator returns the default value, if the sequence is empty. The sequence here is empty, therefore we got the default value of an integer. Therefore we got zero as output. This is the difference between both operators. In summary, both operators are to get the last element from a sequence. But in case the sequence is empty, an exception will be thrown for last operator, and the default value will be returned for last or default operator. We can use both operators in another way. The first way was using the operator with empty brackets. The second way is using the operator with a lambda expression within the brackets. It means, we can set a condition in the brackets to filter the elements, before getting the last element. If you don't know, what is lambda expression and how to write, please check the following video. I explained it in detail. Let's see the following query to check how to use these operators with a lambda expression. I have an array consisting of 7 numbers. And here is a condition to get only the numbers, which are greater than 5. The result of the query until this point is the following collection, which contains 4 numbers. Let's now use last operator with a lambda expression. I will write the following condition, to get only the numbers, which are greater than 7. The result of this expression now is the following collection, which contains only these two numbers. And because I am using last operator, I will get the last number from this collection. So the result of this query is the following number. I will get the same result, if I am using last or default operator. Let's now change the condition within the brackets to get the numbers, which are greater than 10. The result of the expression is empty, because no number is greater than 10. In this case an exception of type invalid operation exception will be thrown. But if I am using last or default operator, I will get zero as result, which is the default value, because there are no elements in the sequence. This is also how to use both operators with a lambda expression. Before I switch to UI path, let me summarize both operators. Both are to return the last element from a sequence. Last operator. If the sequence is not empty, I will get the last element. But if the sequence is empty, 
an exception of type invalid operation exception will be thrown. Last or default operator. If the sequence is not empty, I will get the last element. If the sequence is empty, I will get the default value. The default value depends on the data type, which I have. For example for integer type it's zero. For boolean type it's false, and so on. To use the operators we have two ways. Either without anything in the brackets. Or using a lambda expression. We can use both operators in any point in the query, but only as method. So we can use both operators only in method syntax, or in mixed syntax. That's all what you have to know about both operators. Let's now switch to UI path to see some examples, where we can use both operators. The examples for today are about XML files. Let's see how to get specific data from XML file. Let's check the first file. I have here a list of orders. There are three orders. Each order is an element and it has the attribute ID. Each order contains price element. Price element has only a value. For example the first order has the element price with value 11.99. In the first example I want to write a query, to get the last price element from this XML file. It means, I want to get this element as output using link query. Let's see how to do that. First thing I will do is to copy the file path, because I need it later in UI path. And now I will create the variables I need. The first one for the XML document. It's of types document. The second variable is of type X element, to store the price element from the XML file, what I want to get using the link query. Now I have the variables I need. First I have to read the XML file. For that I will use the following statement. I use the function load with the XML file path. In this way I am storing the XML file in this variable. Let's start writing the query in an assign activity. In the first line I am looping the price elements in the XML document. And then I am selecting each price element. The result until this point is the following collection, which contains all price elements from the document. After the query I used last operator, to get the last element from this collection. It means, I should get this element as output from the query. This is how it works. If you want to learn more about XML in general, or also about XML in UI path, please check the following videos. I explain the basics of XML, what you should know, if you want to use XML in your project. I will add write line activity, to print out the price element. And another write line activity to print out the value of this element. Let's execute the code to check the result. As you see, I have in the first line the complete element. It's the last price element from XML. And the second line contains the value of this element. Let's check it in the XML file directly. As you see, it's the last element in the file. So it works fine. I will now change last operator to last or default, to check if I will get the same result. Let's execute it again. As you see, I got again the same element. And here also the same value. So there is no difference between both operators. Let's change the query again to use the second overload of this operator with lambda expression.
I added the following expression to filter the values. I want to get all price elements, where the value is smaller than 30. It means, we had three elements as output from the query. And as result of this expression, I will get only these two elements, because the value is smaller than 30. Now using last or default operator I will get the last element. So I should get this element as output. Let's execute the code to check that. As you see, I got the correct element as output. And here also the value from this element. Now I will change the expression to get only the elements, where the value is greater than 50. As you know, we don't have any element, where the value is greater than 50. Let's check what happens now. The query works fine without exceptions, but the next activity causes an exception, because I am trying to print out a null variable. As mentioned, once we use last or default, we will get the default value if no elements found. And here we didn't find any element, where the value is greater than 50. Therefore I got the default value. So what is the default value here? As mentioned, for integer it's zero, for boolean it's false and so on. And here I have an object, so the default value for an object is null. As you see, I got here null as result, so it works fine. To avoid the exception after the query, I will add if condition. The condition here will be the following. So I am checking if the element variable is nothing. This means, that I am checking if the variable is null. If it's null, I will write the following text in the output console. But if the variable contains an element, I will write the element and the value in the output console. So from the query I will get a result. Either one element or null, if no elements found. If the variable is null, I will write this text. But if the variable contains an element, I will write the element and the value. Let's execute it to check what happens. As you see, I got this text, that the element is null. And no exceptions are thrown. I will change the condition again to check, if the value is smaller than 30. I will execute it again. As you see, I got the element and also the value. So it works fine, if we have value or not. And we don't get any exceptions. That's all about the first example, how to get the last element from XML file. Let's now move on to the next example, where I have another XML file. Let's see this file. Here I have again a list of elements. I have the same three order elements. But I have other elements in the list. These are sale elements. These elements contain also price elements. Now I want to get the same result from the XML file, as I did in the previous example. It means, I want to get the last price element from the order elements. Let's see how can we do that. First I will copy the file path. I will add the new path here, because I want now to read the second XML file. And now I will edit the query. First I will remove the expression to use the first overload of last or default operator. And now I will execute the code to show you, which result I will get using this query. As you see, I got this element as output. And also the value from this element. Let's check it in the XML file. As you see, I got this element as output, because this element is the last price element in the XML file. But I don't want to get this element, because it's under sale elements. As mentioned, I want to get the last price element under order elements. So I want to get this element, which is under order element. To do that I have to edit the query. First thing I have to do, is to get only the order elements. Therefore I will replace price with order. Now select element means, that I will select order elements. But I don't want to do that. I need to select price elements. 
therefore I will use the same statement to get price elements, which are under order elements. So the first line to get only the order elements from the XML file. In the second line I am getting the price elements, which are under order elements. In this way I have only the price elements of order elements. And from these price elements I want to get the last one. Let's first check, if the query is correct. I have a validation error, because I am trying to store a collection of X element in a variable of type X element. I have to change the query. I will add first operator for example. Why I did that and what does it mean now? Let's visualize the XML file and the result step by step, so that you understand what happens here. In the first line I will get the three orders from the XML file. It means, I have now a collection of three orders. It's the outer collection. In the next line I am getting all price elements of one order as collection. It means, the result at this point is a collection for each order element. So I have three collections. Each collection is inner collection. Each collection has only one price element, because under each order element there is only one price element. But if we have more than one price element under one order, they will be together in the same inner collection. I have now a collection of collection. I mean, I have outer collection consisting of three inner collections. Using first operator means, that I want to get the first element from the inner collection. Each inner collection contains only one element, therefore I will get this element, which is the first and only one in the collection. The result will be then the following collection, which contains only price elements. I have now only one collection of elements. And using last or default operator means, that I want to get the last element from this collection. So the result should be the following element. This is how the query works step by step. As you see, I don't have any errors now. Let's execute the code to check if it's correct. So I got this element as output, which is the last one under order elements. And also the value of this element. This is the correct result, what I was searching for. Let's see which operators can we also use, to get the same result. I will replace first operator with last operator. Is there a difference now? No there is no difference between first and last at this point, because I have only one price element under each order. As mentioned, this operator here to get the first or last element from the inner collection. And the inner collection contains always only one element. Therefore the first and last element are the same. Let's execute it to check the result. As you see, I got the same result. I can also use element at operator with the index 0. This means, that I want to get the element on index 0 from the inner collection. It's the same as first or last operators. Let's execute it again. As you see, I got again the same result. I can also use other operators to get the same result, such as take or skip operators. This is how to get specific elements from XML file using link query. And also how to use both operators in link. If you still have any questions about both operators, please don't hesitate to write us. Thanks for watching and have a great day.